the rights when uh, you encounter ice, if you encounter ice, and the other is sort of just preparing yourself if um, you know the worst case scenario happens. There's there's steps we can take to be more ready. And um, one of the resources back there, the ILRC uh, guide, has information on different kind of planning. You know, making sure you've got your documents in order, planning for uh, what's going to happen to your children or elderly parents, etc. So encounters with ice, kind of just a, this is a very broad overview. We could have a whole training yes. session on things to do. The first is to stay calm, which is very, very hard to do when you're in this moment of sort of panic. So one of the big things is to practice. Practice um, what you're going to be saying or doing in the, in the event you do have an encounter with ice. And make sure you're practicing with your entire family. It's not, it's not helpful if it's just you who knows what your rights are, but your children don't know that information, or your brother or your sister, because if someone comes knocking on the door and they don't know what to do, the whole, the whole sort of family or community might be in danger. One of the things is to make sure not to open the door unless there's a warrant that's issued for you or someone else in the home mm -hmm. that is actually signed by a judge. Um, there has been a lot of um, instances where there's um, sort of administrative warrants that are issued by um, the Department of Homeland Security or ICE um, that they try and utilize. That is not the same thing as a, a warrant that's issued by a judge. And so make sure um, in the event someone does come to your house that you're asking for that information. If you're stopped in public, make sure you ask, am I free to go? And if you are, you're free to leave. Um, you have the right not to speak. You have the right to say you want to speak with a lawyer and do not sign anything, particularly if you don't know what it is that you're signing. Mm -hmm. And some folks uh, write these things or write what they would say at the door and hang it next to the door so mm -hmm. that if they're panicking in the moment, they can remember and kids who might forget will have it handy. And people don't always feel comfortable saying, uh, you know, I don't want to see you. Uh, that feels rude or disrespectful, and so people may be friendlier than the situation calls for. So it's it's nice to have a little script that says, um, "I'm I'm I'm sorry, but uh, I'm I'm not willing to speak with you right now. I'm not going to open the door. Have a nice day." Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've worked with a lot of community members who say, "I can't speak." like that so can I say something like that yes you can tell them to have a nice day just don't open the door uh, do you I, it's too long song it might be helpful sure. I don't know we it's have a little video. clip that we thought might be helpful it's kind of just a summary of three of the things that are um, happening most frequently that kind of trips people up uh, a warrant A warrant of arrest issued by um, immigration looks like, and then I believe they have an example of one that's issued by a judge here, so that you can kind of see the difference of what they might look like. The other thing that um, they they talk about in this video is that it's common um, it's common for ICE to show up um, and identify themselves solely as police. Um, and so making sure to ask the question about, you know, which police agency are you um, to ensure that you're actually speaking to your local law enforcement versus ICE. And then the third one um, is just the issue of collateral arrest. So um, they come looking for someone and you might be there um, making sure not to, um, making sure not to open the door if they don't actually have something for you or for your specific home. Yeah. And if they have a valid warrant and it's for somebody who is physically present in the house, the best thing is for that person to excuse themselves and walk outside so that ICE is never entering the home. Uh, if they have a valid warrant, it, it needs to be respected. Uh, they still don't have to talk, they, they can ask for the lawyer, but the safest thing to do for others in the home is for that person whose name is on the warrant, and that person only, to walk outside. We don't want to see more harm than needs to happen. So this, again, is for a worst case scenario, uh, which I still believe is quite remote. I believe it less than I did a week ago, but I, I, I still think this is 
um, planning for something that's a couple years down the road. Um, but it's good to um, gather, can, can um, uh, so we talked about the importance of finding an attorney. Um, and in Baltimore, Esperanza Center is very reliable when it comes to immigration services. Um, they do consults for very low cost. I think it's, it's either 50 or $75. I think even that can be waived. The mayor's office has a phenomenal website with resources um, well beyond Esperanza um, for a much longer list. And it also includes you know, mental health services and many other kind of collateral uh, needs that people may have. And then importantly is keeping your information organized and gathered so that you have copies of your most essential documents somewhere safe, um, all in one place. And that would be copies of your immigration paperwork. Uh, if you have a passport um, from another country or if your children have a US passport, copies of those things. Copies of taxes that you've paid. Um, it copies of you know, uh, 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 or a list of medical prescriptions, something that in, you know, in a moment's notice, it would be really handy to have in one place. Many of those things will be relevant to any immigration case that um, you eventually have, so they're good to gather. Um, and uh, yeah, just to make sure that those are, are with somebody that, that you trust, who you would be, who would be the person you call um, if something were to happen. Um, and what I've realized, I've been speaking to communities across Maryland since the election. And what, the first time I talked about all of this stuff and having a safety plan for kids, I couldn't, it, it was hard. It was very hard to think about what happens if you're not able to pick up your child from school. Um, what I've realized after doing this over and over is some of these things, it's in this immigration context, but they're just being a responsible adult. There's no guarantee that I'm gonna be able to pick up my daughter you know, from school um, you know, if I have a bad car accident, there's, things happen in life. Um, and a lot of this advice that we're giving in the context of, you know, DACA going away um, is just good advice in general. We should be prepared, you know, if we have a business, somebody can take it over. We should be prepared with plans for our kids and so forth. So, um, I'll rename this successful adulting, and I will confess <laughs> I'm, I'm still a work in progress myself. Um, but sometimes it's nice to just remember this is not all about immigration, but being, being a human. Um, so those were, we have more slides and other places that we could um, send folks if they want more detail on this. We have Maryland-specific information about a lot of these things. 